<laughs> uh, it's in French. Hi there. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody. So today's lesson is just took my camera out of the box level. So if you're brand new to this, do not worry, you're in the right place. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to finally freeze those sports pictures. If you've been taking pictures of your kids out on the soccer field and it ends up just looking like a ghost out there, we're gonna fix that today. All right, so first things first, go ahead, grab your camera. And the first thing that you wanna do is set it on to shutter priority. This is where we're actually able to control the shutter speed in our camera. Depending on your camera brand, there's gonna be a different setting for shutter priority. Most cameras, this little wheel dial up here, went with S for shutter priority. That makes sense. Canons, however, and as a Canon user, went with TV for time variable, just to be special. So yeah, go ahead, set it over to your shutter priority setting on that top dial up there. And then once you've got your camera on, you can go ahead and use what I so lovingly call in the very technical terminology that I use, the clicky wheel. See, clicks. A lot of camera manuals will call it something like control dial B or something, but that's ridiculous. It's the clicky wheel. Depending on your camera, the clicky wheel might be in different places. For Canons, it's usually up top here, right next to your shutter button. For the Nikons, it's gonna be in the back here. For the Sony's, it's actually gonna be in one of two places. You might have it here, or you might have it back here. Nikons, depending on which model you have, you may even have another one up here in front of your shutter button. So you found the clicky wheel, great, and you're clicking it around. Where's my shutter speed? It's gonna be in a couple of different places. The first spot that it's more than likely going to be is in the back of your camera screen. So you can see here with the Canon up top, it says one over. Right now it's 320th of a second. So it's that fraction that we're looking for. That's our shutter speed. Sony's or mirrorless cameras, you might have it down the very bottom of your camera and you will not see that one over. They're kind of expecting you to do a little bit of math here just to save some space. But you'll see something like 60 or 100 or 500. That's not 60 or 100 or 500 seconds. That's 1 500th of a second or 1 100th of a second. So just remember to put that one over in front of it. Nikons and Canons, you'll see the same thing when you look through the viewfinder down there in the bottom left hand corner. The shutter speed will be visible, but that one over will not be there. Awesome, halfway there. Now, what shutter speed do I use? Depending on the picture that you're taking, that answer is gonna be a little bit different. If you're just kind of meandering around a party or a gathering or something like that, it's gonna be at one over 125. 125th of a second is a pretty safe bet for most pictures of people just kind of walking around. Now, let's go ahead and crank it up to one over 250. This is gonna to start to capture things like kids running around, if someone's jogging, if there's a music performance. Along those lines, one over 250 is gonna be a safe bet. Now, what if we've got people moving faster? Let's say like any kind of usual sport, soccer, volleyball, basketball, those types of things, one 500th of a second. This is usually my go-to for sports photography, especially if it's indoors. Now, what if we just added wheels to the mix? Now we've got biking, motocross, NASCAR, anything crazy with its wheels motorized, we're going up to one one thousandth of a second. Let's say if you didn't want to just freeze the person, but you wanted to freeze an object, so like a tennis racket, a ball, something like that, they're actually going a lot faster. So we're gonna to have to crank it up all the way to one two thousandth of a second. Now, once you get to those higher shutter speeds, you're gonna notice that your picture is probably getting quite a bit darker. So how do we fix that? How do we make our pictures brighter? We're gonna change our ISO. How do we do that? It's gonna depend on your camera. I recommend looking at your manual for this, but there's a couple of ways I can tell you right now. First one is check on the outside of your camera somewhere for a button that says ISO. For my Rebel, it's up here. For the Nikons, I would have to hit this I button in the bottom corner, but an easier and probably more direct way would be just to go into your menu. For most other camera brands, you're gonna be able to find it in your menu. So go ahead, hit that menu button, and probably within those very first menu items of that camera menu, you're going to see a setting for ISO. Set it to auto if you can. If not, 800 or 1600 is gonna be a safe bet for most scenarios. If you need it brighter, 
crank it up higher. So if this was all a lot of information and you don't wanna to have to rewatch this video out in the field, don't worry, we made cheat sheets, yay! So go ahead, check out the link in the bottom of the description and it'll take you to our cheat sheet page on our website for the Atlanta School of Photography. Thanks for joining us, we'll see you next time, bye!